Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Megan. This is Chiron Equine. Um, if you're new here, I am a trainer, a riding coach, and a breeder in Southern Ontario in Canada. And what I have for you today is a video of my first ride on a semi-feral pony that I've been working with since September. So I'm really excited for this, but I have a disclaimer. I am not here to try and have anybody copy what I'm doing. I want to show you what I'm doing. I want to talk you through my logic and the way I reason these things out as I'm teaching them to a young horse. But I don't think that anybody should be trying to learn to handle horses or train horses 100% from the internet or from distance learning. It really is something that you need to do hands-on in person with a competent, experienced trainer. That's not to say that you can't learn new things online, learn new philosophies, learn new ways to think about a scenario, that's awesome. But I don't think that anybody should be handling horses that's only ever learned things online. Horses, as much as we love them, can be a dangerous animal just because of their size. And I wouldn't recommend that anybody learn skydiving from a DVD either. Um, there are a lot of great things that you can learn online without having to pay for in-person coaching. And I understand that riding and horse training are expensive, but it's not the safest way to go. So please, please, please don't take what I'm gonna show you today as something that you should copy because what I am showing you is a glimpse of 10 minutes with one horse in one scenario with four months of prep work. So I don't want anybody to think that they can just take a look at what I'm about to show you and do that themselves. So to get into it, uh, Daisy is a coming four-year-old Bashkir curly pony mare. Um, that is a fairly rare breed. They have a curly coat. They're almost like a poodle. They have the same sort of lower allergy threshold. She's a large pony. And um, when I say semi-feral, she's not like a wild Mustang or anything. As far as we can tell, she was fairly well handled in her first year of life. But after the client that I'm working with bought her, um, the owner had a bit of a health crisis and had to send her away to board somewhere for about 18 months. And in that time, when she went to pick her horses up, she discovered they were probably not handled at all. They didn't get any vet, any farrier, any grooming. They were just wild. So from the time she was one till she was about three, three and a half, she just wasn't handled at all. So it was actually my veterinarian who referred this client to me. They needed her and the other horse on the property to have some groundwork and training just so that they could be caught for vaccinations and veterinary appointments and things like that. So that was when I stepped in and started working with them. Uh, this pony has an absolutely lovely disposition. She's a little bit on the anxious side, but she really, really wants to please people. And um, what you're gonna see is just the first time I'm actually sitting on her. I have done a ton of prep work to get her to this point. And you're gonna hear me say a couple of times in the video, train in the conditions that you want them to behave in. So what you're gonna see looks a little bit chaotic. Um, and that's just because she lives out, she lives with other horses, she lives with a couple of livestock guardian dogs. There were other things going on on the farm, but Knowing this pony the way I do, I knew that making everything perfect for her was gonna make her more anxious because that's not the environment we normally practice in. And you're gonna hear me repeat that at least two more times in this video. So I just want you to know that um, that's something I really, really believe in. If we make it perfect for our horses all the time, they will only be good when it's perfect. And you will get sick of hearing me say that, but it's so, so true and so, so important. So let's get into it. All right, so I have already done a lot of mountain walk prep with this pony. We have done a lot of standing next to her, kicking the things that I set her up next to. I don't usually use this over trucker's trough, but that's what we had on this day. Um, I decided to do this in the yard where they stay at night because it's an environment she's comfortable with. We have done a lot of work with her in here, but most of the mounting block type play I have done with her was in another field. Um, I have laid like this belly over on her once before on both sides, 
and as I'm watching me doing it now, I'm seriously regretting these pants. If you never see them again, this is why. Um, but what I'm looking for her here is for her to stay still and just really be okay with everything I'm doing. I don't want her to be upset or nervous. Um, and we've done a lot of prep work to get to this point. I have, like I said, I've bellied over her before on both sides. I do have someone else there with me that you can't see right now. That little step she took there, I'm okay with because that was just her um, giving herself a better base of support with her front feet. She wasn't actually trying to walk off. And now I'm just telling her owner that I'm going to throw a leg over and stand still. And then I'm going to have her walk up and take the lead rope. And we're going to go for a little bit of a pony ride. And on a first ride, that's all I'm going to do. I am just going to sit and uh, let her lead her around. I just want her to get used to walking around and having to balance and accommodate for the weight of a rider at the top. Um, I don't want anything we do today to be a surprise to her. I have already done some work where I am doing things like lunging her and moving her around while I'm standing at a height that is going to be similar to when I'm sitting on her back. So that's exactly what I want to see. She's looking at me, she's paying attention, and it's no drama. This is exactly what I want starting a horse to look like. She's looking around. There was a lot of chaos going on this day, um, but all of it is exactly the kind of chaos we've worked her in before. So I'm fine with it. I think that she would be much more nervous or anxious if we tried to create perfect conditions. And I've said this before, and I say it to a lot of my clients too, if we only ever train our horses in perfect conditions, we can only ever expect them to behave in perfect conditions. So in this particular case, this pony already lives out. She lives with her little brother who's in that bottom corner. She lives with those two dogs. They stay out there 24 seven. Um, you can't hear it, but there was a tractor and a chainsaw going by. All of these things are scenarios that I've prepped her in, so I'm comfortable working her in that same scenario. I think that if we locked the pump, uh, her brother and the dogs out of the field and they started running the fence line and calling, that would be more stressful for her. And we'll build to that. We will get there, but... This was a day I just wanted her to go for a nice little walk with some weight on her back. Now, talking about weight, I am too big for this pony. There's no doubt in my mind, but we are on a lockdown right now. So I am allowed to be out training on my own, and the owners obviously live on the property, so they are allowed to be there. But the rider that I had lined up, I have a very talented um, teenage rider that was going to come out and help me back this pony. Um, I can't pick her up. I can't bring her with me on the road right now. So we will get there. But in the meantime, um, I'm not so big that 10 minutes of walking on, with me on her back is going to hurt her. But I chose for a couple of reasons to ride bareback because of my weight, because my saddle's not fitted to her and it's a little bit long for her back because it's not a pony size saddle. Um, I thought it would be more comfortable for her if I didn't put the saddle on her this time. And frankly, if something went totally sideways, the saddle is not going to save me. It's not going to help enough with me staying on that it would be worth it um, for the extra pressure that it might put on her. And it was pretty cold this day and I wanted to keep my winter boots on and they don't fit in my stirrups. So I'm totally fine with this. Obviously, when I start asking her to go off of my cues and steer her myself, I'm not going to do that bareback. But I'm also hoping we'll be out of lockdown and I'll be able to bring out a more appropriately sized rider for her. So I've doubled the speed here. Um, I just wanted you to see we just walked her around. Um, we stopped a couple of times and backed her up. We did some turns right and left. And she was fantastic. This is exactly what I want to see on a first ride. If I have prepped a horse properly, nothing I do should be so surprising to them. Like if they've already climbed three quarters of the way up the stairs, it's not a shock that there's a new stair at the top um, or a next stair at the top. If all I've ever done is, 
I don't even know how I'm going to finish that metaphor. I'll come up with a better one. Sorry, guys. But uh, what I'm trying to say is just that nothing that I'm doing with her here today is such a leap from anything that we've done before that it's a surprise to her. Um, there we just stopped to look at the tractor coming back towards us. And then uh, Riley and his owner went for a little walk. We had a little bit of a pony ride. Uh, I'm sorry, some of this is out of frame. I just had my phone set up on a fence post. Um, but you can see, like, the dogs are wrestling. They were being really loud. She didn't even flick an ear at them. Um, there was a tree being chainsawed up on the driveway. That didn't bother her. And it's because we have practiced in these conditions. If you only ever train a horse in perfect conditions, you will create a horse that only functions in perfect conditions. And that's not what I'm going for. This pony is eventually going to either be a kid's pony or a family trail horse. And I want her to be used to paying attention to me no matter what's going on, not just paying attention to me because there's nothing else distracting happening. So we finished off here by me just leaning back and forth, touching her bum, touching her ears, getting her used to my weight shifting around. And that was our whole session. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. I will have another video out for you later this week. Um, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. Please, if you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe. I am trying to grow this channel this year and it really helps me out and I will see you soon.